<clears throat> Good evening and salutations, my Days of a Lot fans. Okay, so this episode was mixed. There was some really good stuff in here. There was some stuff in here that I wasn't really too interested in. And I think if you've been watching my channel for a while, you can kind of guess the stuff that um, I kind of gave to Ish about and a lot of aspects. But I want to start off with Sloan and Melinda. Sloan tells Melinda that pretty much Ish is hitting the fan. Leo try to extort EJ, wind up telling him everything. Um, but EJ, for the most part, it seemed like he's going to sit there and keep quiet about this. The interesting part about this particular conversation is that she gets to a point where she's like, you know, after she's like, you know, I guess everything's going to be okay. And then she's like, what am I doing? You know, like, is this really worth it? Everything that I've done for this family, everything, all this stuff that I'm, I'm literally going out of my way, is this all worth it to sit there and keep it? And for the first time in a long time, she actually impressed me with that. Because in all reality, besides this guy's looks, he brings absolutely nothing to the table. He really doesn't. Um, and like I said, this chick looks like a Victoria's Secret model with a law degree. What the hell are you doing with her? This is absolutely insane. So I'm glad that she's actually coming to a point where it's like, I'm doing too much. Um, now, Johnny talks to EJ about the pregnancy and how it could be at risk and, you know, ask him for a favor as far as doctors and stuff like that. And then it gets into a conversation where he's like, is she actually going to have the baby? Like, she's not going to have the baby, right? He talks, about all the, he talks about all the risks and everything. Now, the one thing he does sit there and say, he says a lot, but the one thing that he did sit there and say that was important was, what did you want? You know, because he's like, hey, listen, whatever she decides, I'm going to sit there and support her. And I, I you know, that's, that's fine. But you are allowed to sit there and have your own opinions. You know, yeah, you can sit there and support her. But at the end of the day, don't lie to yourself. I think that's very important in a relationship, you know. Um, but sometimes when you're with somebody for so long, you're into them so much, you start to lose your own identity. You look at GH with TJ and Molly, and TJ just, for the most part, went along. And is regretting that now because he didn't sit there and speak up. So I give EJ a lot of props for that. Unfortunately, that's when things, well, I would sit there and say it's honest. Because there's a point where he he seems like he's going to be out of pocket PC-wise when he's like, well, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he's also a Demera, you know, bloodline and everything like that. And Johnny's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you, are you sitting there saying because he doesn't have the perfect genes or she doesn't have the perfect genes, then she's not a true Demera or he's not a true Demera? Like, what are you sitting there saying? Now, is it an out-of-pocket comment? Yeah. But that's how he feels. Good or bad. You know? And I think that's where he's sitting there telling him, hey, listen... You have time on your side. If you want to sit there and try again, you can. If you don't feel, if you feel that this child may come out, you know, with any sort of, you know, issues, then you got to sit there and act now. If you don't want to sit there, if you decide you don't want to have this child, you need to sit there and start making decisions early because these doctors are not miracle workers, you know. And it's an ugly conversation. Uh, let's just be real, it's not a good conversation, but it's one of those things 
We have to have it. Um, while Eric is with e well, while Eric is with um Nicole, they were talking about work and everything like that, and all the charity work that she did. And she talked about how there was a point where she was practically living out of her car, and the only thing that was keeping her sort of afloat was the uh, quote unquote misty circle. Um, videos that was going on. And, you know, Eric is all like, oh, you know, just when you sit there and think you know somebody or whatever, like you learn something new about someone every day. They also talk about their respective partners and the arguments that they were having and stuff. Now, when Sloan was sent there talking about all the stuff that she was trying to do to keep this man and how much she wanted to be with him, when Eric walked out, you know, Eric was just trying to hug her and sit there and say he loves her and she didn't really say anything. I'm like, if you're trying to keep this man, why are you sitting there being so cold? But that's when she was like, you know, towards the end, she was like, what am I doing? Like, is this really worth it? And I think right then and there, when she was that cold and that distant, that distant, told everything that we needed to know. So it should be interesting how everything shakes up from what I've heard, the rumors I've heard, which I'm not going to sit there and repeat them, but just rumors that I heard. Now, Harris is they're trying to crack the code in this book. He's not getting anywhere. He sends it off to one of his Navy friends to sit there and try to help out. Meanwhile, Clyde calls um, Ava Gives her twenty four, gives her forty eight hours, or else, and then tells her the instructions on how to destroy the book. Now they want to sit there, you know. She lies and say, "Well, I don't have the book yet, or whatever." But they want to sit there and try to use the book to to snare him up, you know, to, to kind of capture him. But she's already talking about destroying the book. Now Harris does sit there and say something about trying to track him through his email, and. <laughs> You know, before the episode ends, they're, they're, they're looking at the book or whatever, they're holding the book, and it was like, this book is sticky. Like, you didn't get food on there or anything like that, right? And then they realize that there's blood on the book. I don't know what this means, but maybe it'll mean something interesting. I guess we'll see. <clears throat> and then we get to, my opinion, the less interesting stuff. Um, so you got, you got Tate and this guy, I can't remember his name, and you got Holly and Sophia. And the only reason I remember name Sophia was because it, it literally happened almost right towards the end. So they're all both sitting there talking about prom and everything like that. And at some point, they, they kind of meet up by accident. Like, um, Tate apparently throws a football and it hits Sophia in the face and she's all crying and whiny and upset that, you know, her nose is broken or she's going to have a black eye and it's going to be really bad for the, um, for the problem. But she was also sitting there talking about, before they met up, about asking Tate out, you know, for the problem. So she's upset with, with, with Tate and, you know, Tate is all apologetic and everything. And then Sophia's like, hey, you know, um... Something, something comes along and she's like, you know, I don't know if anyone's going to really want to sit there and go to the prom with me. And she asks him out and he's very hesitant. And she's like, well, it's either yes or no. Now, my whole thing is, if I ask you out and you're hesitant, I'm automatically just going to be like, no, nah, you know, I'm good. Like the interest is just going to dissipate with a snap of a finger. Because that means that you're just Pretty much not interested. You can tell the look on his face that you that he wasn't interested. But it seems like this chick is so desperate to sit there and be with him that you know uh, Holly has to sit there and practically push him into it. Like, oh no, I think y'all should y'all should you know y'all should date or whatever. And she's all super happy. But I'm like, really, bro? Really? You know. 
she was bragging early about how she could sit there and get like 10 guys or whatever asking her out. It's like, what's so damn special about him? I don't know. Again, <laughs> maybe I'm being a little more hypercritical because I just generally did not care about this aspect of the story. And I get it, right? At least they're actually giving these teams something to do. And they're not just being strictly filler characters. I, I give them props for that. This is not exactly my cup of tea, personally. You know? Uh, so that's pretty much about it for the most part. I can't think of anything else, but as I always sit there and say, come to the live stream tonight. Come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll talk about all the shows, General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, Born and Beautiful, and Young and the Restless. With that being said, I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next video.